Hi everyone and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Rosana and today we are going to be making an all-time classic chiles rellenos. We're going to be stuffing them with cheese and also my homemade chorizo recipe which I'm going to link down in the description area and here in the cards. All right, let's get started. First, go ahead and remove the stem area from one and a half pounds of Roma tomatoes and make sure they are nice and ripe. What you're gonna do next is go ahead and cut them all in half. And I have a sheet pan ready lined with parchment paper. Let's go ahead and transfer them all to the sheet pan. Just leave a little bit of space in between. These are some beautiful tomatoes and when we roast them in the oven, they're gonna develop a really concentrated flavor that's gonna give us an amazing end result. All right, all we're gonna do before we put them in the oven is drizzle them with a little bit of avocado or even olive oil, like a smooth one. The tomatoes are ready. Let's go ahead and place them in a 425 degrees Fahrenheit oven. While that's happening, I have a comal over medium heat to roast four poblano peppers. All I'm doing here is roasting them until they become blackened and charred on all sides. Look at this great charring happening. Poblanos are perfect for stuffing because they are mild in heat and they have a really profound green flavor. And they smell amazing, especially at this stage. Interesting fact, I find that the poblanos that you purchase in Mexico tend to be spicier. I don't know what it is, but it's true. <laughs> Remove them as they become ready and place them inside a plastic bag so they can sweat and the skin loosens up. Look, this is how it's supposed to look. It is ready. Now close the bag. We're gonna let them sweat for about five minutes because we don't want them to get way too soft. It can happen if you leave them in here for too long. The tomatoes are ready. They took about 30 minutes to fully cook and they smell amazing. I mean, who needs air freshener when you have tomatoes freshly coming out of the oven? <laughs> no one. All right, now it's been about five minutes. We have to take the chiles out. They're still hot, but we don't want them to stay in here too long. I see the skin started to loosen up already, so that's great. Now be careful, if they're too hot, you can use tongues. You don't wanna burn yourself. And we're gonna allow them to cool down as well so we can work with them. It's easier that way. Okay, I can go ahead and peel the skin off already because they're not hot anymore and the skin is already loose enough. Look at that. You see, so just peel as much of it as you can. Look at this. You want to be gentle with the pepper because you don't want the skin to break. After peeling the peppers, we're going to go ahead and prep them. To do that, we're going to have to make an incision starting at the top and stop right before you reach the center. We don't want to make a huge cut. At this point, you should be able to see the seeds inside if you peek in there through the hole. Go ahead and cut the seeds out without removing the stem. You may need to cut through the veins because the seeds are attached to them. See? Just like that. Now what I like to do is with a spoon, let's go ahead and scoop out the rest of the seeds, the ones that are kind of loose in there. And while you're doing this, be careful not to make the cut any bigger. I mean, it will open up a bit more, but you don't want to have it go all the way down to the end of the pepper. We want to keep it as short as we can. Let's do the rest of the peppers. Like I said before, poblanos tend to be mild in heat, but just to be on the safe side, you can wear kitchen gloves. All right, let's set these aside because we're going to get started on the filling. Follow me to the stove. Go ahead and place your pan over medium heat. 
And we're gonna be adding a couple of tablespoons of avocado oil. You may need more or less of the oil depending on the brand of chorizo you're using. I'm using my homemade recipe, which I highly suggest you try out. All right, we're gonna need one pound of pork chorizo. When the oil is hot, go ahead and add it in. And you're gonna break it apart with a spoon. Allow the chorizo to fully cook while stirring as needed. Meanwhile, we're gonna dice half of a medium white onion. Right before the chorizo is cooked, go ahead and add the diced onion. And stir everything to combine. We wanna allow the chorizo to fully cook and the onions to soften. It's looking good. This looks ready, but first, before I take it off the heat, I want to taste for seasoning. Specifically for salt, because the chorizo already has a lot of seasoning in it. It is perfect, I don't need to add anything. If yours does need salt, go ahead and add it. We're good, I'm gonna remove this off the heat. We are making progress. Everything is looking awesome. Let's move on to the cheese. We're gonna need to shred six ounces of Oaxaca cheese. If you don't have Oaxaca or you can't find it anywhere, you can substitute it for mozzarella cheese. They're very similar in flavor and texture. If you don't have a grater, don't worry because you can actually pull this cheese apart. Simple as that. We are ready to stuff the peppers. Let me get the chorizo. Awesome. This is very simple, not complicated at all. All we're gonna do is take the pepper and spoon the chorizo inside the pepper through that incision we made. Stuff it, fill it as much as you want. I like to make them nice and thick. At this point, since the bottom is very narrow, I'm gonna go ahead and push some of that chorizo so we fill the bottom as well. I'm talking about this pointy part of the pepper. Just make sure you leave enough space for the cheese. Be generous, but don't overfill it because we do wanna be able to close them. This pepper is ready. Now let's do the rest. The peppers are stuffed. Now grab a small pan, one corn tortilla, and let's head over to the stove because this is going to be our secret ingredient to make a fabulous chile relleno sauce. Come on. Place a pan over medium heat and add a generous amount of avocado oil because we're gonna pan fry the corn tortilla. The tortilla is crispy and golden brown on both sides. Let's go ahead and remove it. The tortilla smells amazing. This sauce is a true treasure. Go ahead and add all of the roasted tomatoes into a blender. Also do a quarter of a medium white onion, four garlic cloves, two teaspoons of dry Mexican oregano, half a teaspoon of whole black peppercorns and half a teaspoon of whole cumin. The tortilla is cold now. Let's go ahead and break it into the blender. We're also adding one and a half cups of chicken broth. Cover and blend. Set it to the side. Next, we're gonna coat the peppers in half a cup of almond flour. I know this is unusual because usually what's used is all purpose flour, but I can't have it. So this is a great option. Feel free to use either or, your choice. Okay, take them and simply roll them in the flour. 
it should stick to the pepper easily. What this is going to do is help that egg coating stick to the pepper. Perfect. These are ready, set them aside because we're gonna prepare the fluffy airy egg mixture. For the egg mixture, we're gonna need five large eggs and we need to separate the yolks from the whites. Now you have to be very careful because you don't want any of the yolk to get in with the whites because it'll prevent the whites from fluffing up. Using a whisk attachment, whip the egg whites to a firm peak of medium high speed and be careful not to over whip because they will collapse. This looks great. The egg whites look ready. Now lower the speed to medium low and add in the yolks one at a time. Wait for one to incorporate and then add the next one. Stop the mixer as soon as everything looks combined with full volume. Perfect. And we're just gonna coat the entire chile in the egg mixture. At this point, you should have a generous amount of oil heated to about 350 degrees Fahrenheit, ideal for pan frying. Place the coated peppers in the oil and fry all sides until golden brown. Look at this beauty. Right now, I'm actually on medium heat. And I am using avocado oil. Add a little more of the egg mixture if needed to fill some of those spots. As you can tell, I'm using two spatulas to carefully turn the peppers. With one I lift and lay the pepper on the second one to gently lay it on the side that needs to fry. Chile rellenos have been made in my family for as long as I can remember. This is the type of dish we would celebrate whenever it was on our home menu. The excitement was real. Today's recipe has quickly become a favorite because the chorizo adds depth of flavor and an additional layer that you will love. By the way, I have a video for a cheese stuffed chile rellenos that's amazing as well. I will link to it in the description area. We are almost there. Go ahead and place a large pan over medium low heat and add a couple of tablespoons of avocado oil. We're gonna fry the sauce. Once the oil is nice and hot, carefully pour in the salsa. Stir in the sauce, and at this point, we're gonna add half of a bunch of cilantro. And we're gonna allow this to simmer on a very gentle simmer on medium-low heat for an additional 15 minutes. By the way, guys, I did go ahead and cover the pan because it was starting to splash. Just so you know. All right, so halfway through cooking, I did notice that the sauce was turning out a little bit too thick, so I'm gonna add an additional half a cup of the chicken broth. You can do the same at home. If you feel your sauce is turning out a bit too thick, you can always add additional chicken broth. The 15 minutes are up. Let's go ahead and add salt to taste. I'm actually adding one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt. After this, I am gonna taste and adjust if it needs it. Stir everything in. Perfect. By the way, it is very important you taste first because the amount of salt is really gonna depend on the type of chicken broth you use. For example, I used low sodium because I like to adjust the seasoning myself. If you're using regular, you may not even need salt. So that is up to you, make sure you taste. Now, it is time to add all of the peppers in this delicious sauce. Just like that. Don't worry, they're gonna fit. <laughs> there you go. What I like to do, and let me get another spoon. is pour some of that sauce over the peppers. Just like that. These look amazing already. Once you've covered them in the sauce, we're gonna cook them for an additional five minutes covered and on a gentle simmer. This will allow the cheese to melt, the meat to heat back up and just blossom and come beautifully together. 
Serve the stuffed pepper with a generous portion of the marvelous sauce. You can accompany it with a side of Mexican rice and a fresh salad. Chiles rellenos is a Mexican dish originated in the city of Puebla. There are many ways to make this recipe. It can be made with different types of peppers, but I grew up having it with chiles poblanos. The stuffing can also vary. Some are stuffed with cheese, others just with meat, or as you can see here, we can combine both. You will also see them covered in the egg mixture or not covered at all. As you can tell, we have plenty more recipes to try for chiles rellenos. This one is worth every effort spent making it. The hard work, the patience paid off because it is time to taste. I am so ready. These look amazing. All right. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my goodness. I'm loving this. Oh my goodness, there's so many great things happening in this dish. I mean, first you taste the sauce, which is tangy, and then with that fried tortilla, really gave it a special touch. Then you get to the pepper, the chorizo, the cheese. I mean, what can go wrong? Everything is so delicious. I really hope you try this recipe at home. Come back and let me know how it went down in the comment area. Don't forget you can follow me on all of my social media platforms. And also, don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and click the notification bell. Until the next one.